Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. Prepare me. Another day. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. It doesn't have to be Lord. Sunday. Jesus, Jesus, <laughs> we thank him for another day. Praise God. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Praise God. Thank Listen, you. we're not going to be before you long today. We're not going to make you say amen and we're not going to make you say hallelujah. Jesus, Jesus. We're not going to make you raise your hands and confess this or confess that. Amen. amen. Hallelujah. Sometimes the word comes out just the way it is. Amen. Amen. So right now, praise God, let's um, look to the Lord in prayer. Praise God. Amen. We we found out that um, there are others in need of prayer other than us. Yeah. Amen. Some people have it worse than we do. Amen. Hallelujah. Some people are barely living. Amen. Hallelujah. You know, some today can't walk out, go to the store, buy what they want, eat it when they want it. Amen. Hallelujah. Some people don't even have the privilege or the ability to get up and go to the store. Hallelujah. Amen. What I'm trying to say is that, man, we are highly favored, aren't we? That God is looking down on us. Amen. You know, it's like we may not get everything we want all the time, but I've never seen God miss one time. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So today, praise God. If you're thankful, join in us with this prayer, amen? Hallelujah. If you're thankful for all the things that he's done for you, if you realize or recognize that you got up this morning, it wasn't under your own power, amen, that you made it all through yesterday didn't suffer in the hurt, harm, or danger. Even the danger that you suffered, <laughs> he was right there with you and brought you through it to this day. Amen. Tell the Lord thank you. Hallelujah. Father, in Jesus' name, we thank you for this time. We thank you for this place. We thank you, Father God, for these your people. People, Lord, that are going through something right now. And Father God, we come to you knowing that you're able to do just what you said you were going to do. Lord, you said you were going to open the windows of heaven and pour us out a blessing that we will have room enough to receive. Right now, Father God, in this earth, some people need their finances restored. Some, praise God, need their families brought back together and made whole. Father God, some are laying on their sick bed. The doctors have walked away, amen, and saying there's nothing else I can do. But we know, Lord, that you're able to do just what you said you were going to do. We pray for those, Father God, who can't get up this morning and come out and be with us, Lord, as we worship and praise your name. You say it did a sick and a shut in. But, Lord, we know, Father God, you're able to do. You're able to heal able to deliver and Father God you're able to set free and Lord we ask you right now in Jesus name as we put our conditions before you we ask that you heal us Lord of whatever is ailing us now so as we lift your name on high today we cry out in the name of Jesus Father we thank you for all you've done and all you're about to do 
visit us this day, O oh Lord, in the name of Jesus. As you said you would, your presence would be with us. And we thank you right now in the name of Jesus. Father God, some have problems of the day that man can't fix. So we turn it over to you right now. So we ask that you continue to visit us in our homes, out in the hospitals, out on the highways, coming and going. Because Lord, you know you're able and we need your protection. So right now, Father, as we lift your name up, Lord, we just want to thank you. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. We just want to have um, got a couple of announcements, well, one announcement. Amen. Two announcements. Praise God. Hallelujah. You know, tomorrow's the um, first lady birthday. Amen. And she said tomorrow is a busy day, so she wanted the day. <laughs> Amen. So tonight, praise God, instead of having regular Sunday dinner, we're going to she call an audible, amen. We're going to make it her dinner. Hallelujah. So whatever we we're going to have, we're going to turn it into a birthday dinner. Amen. amen. Hallelujah. Come on now. You know, you know, we have, I think she says she don't want cakes. Y'all seen the list already, right? Yeah. Of what she would like to have. Yeah. Every, everybody seen the list? Amen. You haven't seen the list? Me, man, seen, seen the list? Kiki, you haven't seen Liv? Tuki, you seen Liv? All right, ready. Who has not seen the Liv? <laughs> Raise your hand. <laughs> Amen. Where y'all been? <laughs> Praise God. We want to thank God. We, we, we make sure you get the list. I think everything Amazon is on it. <laughs> Anything Amazon is on it. Hallelujah. So, um, Maddie said, he's seeing the list. <laughs> Praise God. But we want to thank and like I said, to remind you that dinner. And, and the reason I'm saying that is because um, I think she, she sees and she remembers everybody's birthday without making her own birthday an issue. Amen. You know, she, every holiday, you know, she wants to make sure everybody has something without worrying about her. Um, every instant that come up, she always wanted to help somebody without ever being helped. Amen? Hallelujah. But you know, to be in that position and to be able to do, amen, that's a blessing. That's a blessing, praise God. So if you haven't seen it and, and you don't know, and you know, like I said today, she got a birthday gift first thing this morning, 7 o'clock, wasn't it? Amen. <laughs> <laughs> hey, man, praise God. She, she's still laughing about that one. But what we want to do today, praise God, is um, we want to read the word. Yeah. Amen. And uh, we're going to have a few words. Amen. You know, sometimes just a prayer is better than anything else. Amen. But we just want to have a few words today. And, and you know, sometimes, and man, you could have phoned this thing on to me and you could have sent an email for that and we could have stayed on. Hallelujah. The Bible says, forsake not the assembling of yourselves. Amen. But listen, this is what I want you to do if you will turn with me, praise God, to the first Peter. Amen. The book of first Peter, chapter five, the book of first Peter. Chapter 5, verses 1 through 10. Amen. And today, praise God, if I was to title this message, I would title it God's Uncommon Favor. Amen. God's Uncommon Favor. Praise God. Amen. Not, not, not his regular favor. And not, not his everyday favor. Praise God. Uncommon. In, in other words, those things that you thought were impossible, God made possible. Yeah. It's uncommon favor. Amen. And those things that when the world turned their back on you, praise God, and you don't see any way that it could even ever possibly happen. Amen. But miraculously, praise God, God shows up, works things out. Amen. And you walk away victorious, victoriously. Amen. We're talking about this uncommon 
favor, praise God, amen. And as you begin to look at the chapter, praise God, 1 Peter, amen, chapter 5, verses 1 through 10, is full of instructions. It is instructions for us all. And if you have your Bible today, praise God, I would like for you to underline, circle, or highlight verse 10. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Come on, praise God. As you begin to read, amen. The elders which are among you I exhort, mm -hmm. who am also an, an elder, mm -hmm. and a witness of the sufferings of Christ, and also a partaker of the glory that shall be revealed. Feed the flock of God which is among you, taking the oversight thereof, not by constraint, but willingly, not for filthy lucre, but of a ready mind, neither as being lords over God's heritage, but being in samples to the flock. Mm. And when the chief shepherd shall appear, ye shall receive a crown of glory that fadeth not away. Likewise, ye younger, submit yourselves unto the elder. Yea, all of you be subject one to another, and be clothed with humility. For God resisteth the proud, and giveth, giveth grace to the humble. Humble yourselves, therefore, under the mighty hand of God, that he may exalt you in due time, casting all your care upon him, for he careth for you. Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary the devil, as a roaring lion, walketh about, seeking whom he may devour, whom resist steadfast in the faith, knowing that the same afflictions are accomplished in your brethren, that are in the world. But the God of all grace, who hath called us unto his eternal glory by Christ Jesus, after ye have suffered a while, make you perfect, establish, strengthen, and settle you. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. Amen. amen. Come on, say amen to the word. Amen. It's a little bit in there for everybody, amen. Oh, yes. Hallelujah. You know, some days I get up and say, Lord, <laughs> Why do I have to face this? Why do I have to go through the things that I go through? Amen. But he told us, praise God, he said elders. And Peter was speaking to, he said, like other elders among the church. Those were the older folks, the one with supposedly some experience. Amen. They would go teach the young people. But the young people, praise God, were supposed to stop and obey and listen to the instructions of the older people, amen? So the word was there, amen? And the word was right, praise God. So speed of talk, bro, talk to this, amen? And, and, but in verse 10, he said, but the God of all grace, who has called us unto his eternal glory by Christ Jesus, and after that, ye have suffered a little while, amen? He said, make perfect, he gonna establish you, he gonna strengthen you, and he gonna settle you. I believe verse 10 is releasing some folks right now, amen. I believe, praise God, there are some people that have been walking around with some stress in their lives, amen. But verse five says, likewise, you younger folks, submit yourselves under the elders of the church, amen. So in other words, praise God, I need to be able to talk to you and for you to understand, I need to be able to speak a word, praise God, according to the word of God, amen. I need to be able to make requests, amen. But when I do it, praise God, I can't do it of myself, man. I got to humble myself before him first before I come to you, praise God. I need to speak to you, praise God, with all humility and with grace. So young folks, nobody's ever going to abuse you, amen? Certainly not me, because the Bible exalts and it tells me that I can't do it, amen? I got to remove it from myself first. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He said, but 10, verse 10 said, after you have suffered a little while, amen? In, in other words, what he's saying, praise God, in order to get to the ED part, that means you have to suffer some things in your life, amen? You're going to have to wake up, praise God. God, stress out. You're going to have to do some things you won't want to do. Amen? But I tell you, the Bible says, he said, cast all your cares upon him. Hallelujah. 
Hallelujah. So in other words, praise God, why are you stressing? Hallelujah. He said, cast them on him, praise God. He said, why are you worried about things and wondering why things are not happening? He said, cast it on him. And he said, he's going to strengthen you. He's going to keep you. He's going to uh, bring you along the way, amen. He's going to bring you out. He said, but the thing is, praise God, you're going to have to suffer a little while. And in verse 9, if you look back at it, I hope you read it with caution and care. He said, because you're not the only ones that are going through this by yourself. He said, we're going to have to suffer some things that we don't feel are right at all. But he wasn't just pointing at the young folks of the church, amen. He said the older folks, praise God, that we have to be able to teach. We're going to have to be able to lead. We're going to have to be able to stand up and be examples for these young children. Why do you think this world is going the way it's going the way it's going, amen? A lot of folks have just closed this book and said, well, Lord, I'd rather do it by myself, amen? So in other words, if I teach you what I know and I don't know anything, therefore there's a whole bunch of dummies running around this world. Oh, with humility, I'm sorry. In other words, if I can't teach you what I don't know, then you're going to face this world unprepared for what's about to happen. But the Bible said God speaks of uncommon, praise God, favor. Amen. So in other words, praise God, while we're still going through what we're going through, he said he yet still is going to strengthen you in your trial. He's yet still, praise God, is going to strengthen you in your tribulation. In other words, praise God, he's going to pick you up when other folks are traveling you down and he's going to make you victorious over these folks. I mean, See, he uncommon favor, praise God, is when they throw you in the prison, praise God, make you the chief of everything, then lied on and cheated, praise God, tossed back in the prison, praise God, but yet still, God kept his hand on you, amen, and you walked out, praise God, governor of the whole country. Somebody need to shout uncommon favor, praise God, hallelujah. Uncommon favor, praise God. He said, with them three Hebrew boys, amen, and Daniel. In the book of Daniel, praise God, said, Daniel and all those boys, were good people. They were had good character, amen. Everything about them was nice and graceful, amen. He said, but when the king came in and they took him and brought him before the king, how many of you know that before Daniel was ever chosen, hallelujah, the king was able to look at him and see that God had favor and grace in his life. In other words, he just wasn't picking some boys out of random sake, amen. He said, God gave him an image that he could stand before a king long before the king ever realized who he was, amen. He said, but when he did, praise God, the king required them that they eat their food, amen. But how many of you know there wasn't nothing wrong with steak? There's nothing wrong with caviar. There's nothing wrong with French rolls, amen. But Daniel said, we choose not to have it. There's nothing wrong with your food, king. He said, but give me vegetables and give me water. He said, by grace, praise God, and by favor, God put favor on Daniel and those three Three Hebrew boys that he was able to accomplish, amen. And and, and I don't know, praise God. He, the king said, okay, give them what they want. He said, when they did, praise God, they came, they fared out better than everybody else. Ten times better. They were stronger. They were faster. And like those things that they were shinier than all the rest of them because God's uncommon favor rested on Daniel in those three Hebrew boys, amen. So what he did, and it worked out for him, praise God. Daniel went to the top of the ladder, him and all his fellows with him, amen. Simply because, praise God, God's favor rested on Daniel. How many of you know, praise God, Daniel came to tell us, praise God, that that same favor that God bestowed on him rests on you right now. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. But see, the thing is, praise God, we got to get to the point where we want and seek the Word of God. Hallelujah. We got to realize, praise God, he put the elders to teach us. They put the elders to lead us. They put the elders before us to guide us, praise God, amen. And he said it's our responsibility as young people to follow the leadership in the Word of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. But now, this is a decision that we got to make today. See, age don't make us old. Age don't make us grown. 
In other words, praise God, said, I appreciate the, the, the spiritual reverend. I appreciate the message. Hallelujah. But I'm just as old as you. Amen. But the thing is, praise God, somebody got to lead. Somebody got to follow. Somebody got to instruct. And somebody have to obey the word of God. Amen. And the Bible told me, praise God, that it's incumbent upon me to teach. So I used to get up worried about what I have to say or how I have to say it. But he told me, praise God, he said, exalt them. Huh? He said, feed the flock of God with among you. He said, taking the oversight thereof, praise God, amen, not by constraint, but willingly. Nobody is forcing me to do this. My arm is not twisted behind my back. He said, and not with filthy Luca. I don't worry about the money situation because God has covered it all. The Bible said he owns all the houses and the cattle on a thousand hills. He said, in my father's house are many mansions. And if it were not so, I would have told you, praise God. He said, but of a ready mind, praise God. See, the thing is, we look out. And we see so many people worry, praise God, that I can't pay tithe. I can't pay offering. I got two house notes. I got double rent, praise God. I'm taking care of the people down the street. He said, everything I got is going out and nothing's coming in. But the Bible said, praise God, in verse 10, he said, after you have suffered, he said, for a while, hallelujah. He said, God himself, he's going to come in and make things perfect. He's going to establish you in your troubles and in your trial. He said he's going to strengthen you and he's going to settle you in it. So the Bible is telling me, praise God, that God has uncommon favor on his people. Amen. But I want you to know when I found out that the scripture was telling me, he said, if my people that are called by my name, he said, shall humble themselves and pray, seek my face and turn from their wicked way. He said, then I hear from heaven, praise God. And he said, I'm going to come in and heal the land, amen. But the Bible is telling me, praise God, and I don't have to read between the lines. You got to be his people. Ah, uncommon. Vest for favor, praise God. Stress it. He said, you don't have to stress. Put your cares on him. Hallelujah. Your mind is running crazy about things that are not supposed to be up to you. Worried about the rent. Worried about how you're going to eat. Worried about how you're going to get the work. He said, cast your cares on him because he cares, praise God. Hallelujah. Come on, somebody. Say, oh, no, no, we weren't going to do that. We weren't going to do that. We weren't going to do that. Don't, don't worry about that. In other words, neither is being Lord over God's heritage. That's me. I can't do that. Hallelujah. He said, I'm supposed to be an example to the flock. Mm, 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 mm. Because, see, I'm working for verse number four. And he said, and when the chief shepherd shall appear, you shall receive a clown of glory that faded not away simply because I took the time to explain the word of God to the people of God in a meek and humble way, in one way in which you can understand. He said, I wasn't like Moses. When he sent Moses and Moses said, here, you want water? Take it. And God said, I did not send that message. Hallelujah. So I'm looking this day, praise God, <laughs> to help myself. I'm looking to survive what I'm going through. I'm looking, praise God, to be counted in that number. I'm looking to say how I got over. <laughs> Hallelujah. But I got to do what I'm supposed to do. And if you would respect the word of God, hallelujah, count me in that word. Don't look at the man. Look at the word, praise God, and say he's filling his position. He's doing what he's supposed to do. 
he's speaking, praise God, to the people of God. See, the thing is, praise God, somewhere along the way, we lost sight of who God is. Somewhere along the way, we start thinking, praise God, that it was the world taking care of us, praise God, because I get up and go to work and I get paid every Friday. I get paid good, or should I say bigly, amen? But I need you to realize, but it's God that causes you to get paid in the first place. Hallelujah. So, what I'm trying to tell you, tithing and offering is right. So if you want to, you can stop the video if you don't want to listen. What I'm saying is, tithing and offering takes care of the house of God. Hallelujah. So if you don't feel like tithing and you don't feel like offering, the house of God is going to go lacking. Mm, 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 mm. I, I, I know what you're saying. I know what you're saying that I'm just one person. How can I do? But it wasn't about the tithing. It's not about the offering. It's about you being that one person obedient to the will of God. Am I, am I humble enough? Okay, okay, I just want to make sure. I want to make sure I'm doing it right. Amen? But see, if you took everyday living, that I live in a house, Either I'm going to own it and pay a mortgage. I'm going to rent it and pay rent. I got utilities. I got trash. I got food. I got electricity. That all those things, praise God, that are going out. So God was saying, how can you look at the church and you paying your rent, your mortgage, your food, and your utilities? And he said, my house go lacking. Mm. What he said about those sealed houses that you want to take care of your own and let me suffer. Hallelujah. And, and, and see, we, we, we're dealing with a young, sophisticated generation. I was just telling my wife, it's like we went to sleep last night, woke up this morning, and this world had changed. There are new rules. There are new issues. There are new everything. And a whole bunch of people taking over and said, Lord, when did we teach them this? How did they learn all of that? I want you to know, praise God, after you suffered a while, the Bible said that you're going to suffer. Weeping may endure for a night, but joy cometh in the morning. He said, but in other words, praise God, what you're going through will end. What you're going through will has a termination and destination date on it, praise God. He said, those things that you're facing, praise God, will not be always in your life. What do you know, praise God? Because God has uncommon favor resting on his people, praise God. This thing may come now, but it's not going to last always. He said that care, take it and turn it over to him. Somebody need to turn it over to him right now because you're worried about what the doctor said. You're worried, praise God, or what the banker's talking about. You're worried, praise God, about those people that are sitting in the government. The Bible said, cast your care upon him, praise God. And when you do, praise God, he had the strength, amen, to take care of all of it for you. He said, but I want you to know that you're going to go through some things. You're going to go through some trials. You're going to go through some suffering. But these things don't last always. God said, I got a plan for you. That even in the midst of your troubles, in the midst of your trials, he said, I'm going to be right there with you even till the ends of the earth. He said, just like I brought them Hebrew boys out, I'm going to bring you out too. He said, in a book, praise God, of Genesis, they talk about Abraham. Abraham encountered three angels that walked up to him. And when the angel got through speaking with him, they walked away and said, hey, that's a man that's highly favored in the will of God. 
How many of you know, praise God, that there are some folks, praise God, we talk about Esther, we talk about David, praise God, we talk about Elisha, all those folks, praise God, that had the will of God resting in their life, but that same will, that same grace, praise God, God is getting ready to pour it out on his people right now. And I want you to know you can work hard as you want. You can work every day. But when God stop pouring out his grace, it's greater. It's going to exceed anything that you could ever imagine, that anything that you could ever want for, praise God. God's grace, amen, his favor, he's going to pour it out on his people. And that thousand dollars a day that you make is going to look like small change, praise God. Hallelujah. You're walking around and saying, man, I can run a mile in under six minutes. God is going to give you speed, praise God, to get back everything that you ever lost. Hallelujah. You're going to be able to walk out, praise God, and name that thing, praise God, because you got the power to claim it and call it what you want, amen. He said, name it and claim it because God gave me the power to make that thing that are not as though they were. Come on, somebody. He said, once I got the power of God, his favor is resting on me. What's God's favor rest on you, praise God? Call it what you want and it got to change. Call it what you want and it will will change because the power of God is in you, praise God. You got to tell you, you're going to speak to that condition and that condition is going to change. No longer you're going to have to put your head up against the wall, praise God, and pray because say, Lord, I'm healed according to your word right now. I'm healed according to your word because I got the favor of God resting in my life. I'm going to tell you about a situation about a young lady, and I know you all know her. She walked into a building one day. She went in to apply for a job. The job was a clerk job, a simple, menial clerk job, amen. She said, but after the interview, praise God, and they talked to her, and she did whatever she had to do and said what she had to do, they said, I can't give you that job. I got one better for you. Hallelujah. And that lady sitting right there, she went to do a job for a clerk for the Internal Revenue Service. When she got through, praise God, they saw even more. They saw a Daniel Grace on her, gave her a job as an auditor. He said, you too good to sit there, praise God. I got something bigger. I got something better. In other words, God's uncommon grace and favor was resting on him. How many of you want to walk into the building, praise God? And the bank manager said, don't worry about the application. I got you covered. Walk into the car dealership. He said, don't worry about it. Make the payments when you want to. I got you covered. Walk into the doctor's office, praise God. And the doctor said, oh my, look at grace. Walking in favor. Down the aisle, praise God. To heal, deliver, set free, praise God. See, the thing is, the Bible isn't a fairy tale. It's not a joke. It's not a game. God's uncommon favor is working in his people. He said, you have not because you ask not. And when you ask, you ask, praise God, expecting to be turned down. Amen? So, I was happy, <laughs> real happy, that she got a real job. Amen? She got one of them GS status jobs. You, the ones that pay you per diem when you come and go. Amen? The ones that pay for your hotel and your meals. Amen? And I said, well, honey, you got to do that. Let me drive you. <laughs> Hallelujah. Vacation. But what I'm saying is, God's uncommon favor rests on his people. In 1 Peter, tells us, praise God, in order to get his favor, we have to follow his instructions. 
And if you are to get his instructions, there has to be somebody there to teach it. Amen? So, it's covered. God don't do anything halfway. <laughs> My God, he doesn't do anything halfway. He said, if you're going to learn it, I'm going to teach it. And if I'm going to teach it, I'm going to have somebody there to teach it to you. But I got to be able, amen, to learn it, to see it, and appreciate it, and share the Word of God with you in a manner that doesn't make you want to get up and say, well, I ain't going back to that church. All they want to do is make you pay your tithe, make you pay your offering, show up for this, and show up for that. Amen? But don't you know God sacrifices only son for you to worry about showing up for this and showing up for that hallelujah and, and, and to make it to make it <laughs> out of second Peter he said Jesus did it willingly how oh, he ran into a point when he said Lord if I could remove this thing from me he said, but nevertheless, not my will, but let your will be done. In other words, he was willing, amen, to take on the cares of the world. Cast your cares on him, for he knows. Amen? Amen. Ah, amen. Listen, we had, um, I was, <laughs> I had this message. And like I told you, I, I had to make sure that before I ever speak a word, I have to turn in all my messages to Andre. And I get to the point sometime, and I said, well, Lord, it, was it me? Amen? Or was it you? You know, in this message, praise God, amen? So, again, I'm having to learn myself to be obedient as to what's going on around me, amen. And I said, well, you know, I'm gonna go turn my message, I'm gonna be obedient, I'm gonna do that. But right in the middle of that prayer, God, God, I got something else I want you to do. You got something else you want you to say. Amen. amen. Hallelujah. So we thank God today for this opportunity. We thank him for this time. And we thank him for you. Amen. Each and every one of you, praise God, being obedient and doing the will of God. And, and I need for you to realize, even on the video, praise God, if you ever feel like you're not doing enough or you need help with what you're doing, amen, First Peter. He said, you know, we, we, we know, amen. Pick up the phone, send me an email, call me, whatever you need to do, praise God, and we'll help you through it. Amen. So if you're confused about tithe, you're confused about offering, you're confused about the church or the will of God, say so. Amen. Hallelujah. So we thank God today again. Praise God for this um, time and let you know, praise God again. My wife getting ready to celebrate her over 20. Is it over 20? Yeah. Over 20th birthday. <laughs> <laughs> Amen. Amen. Praise God. We thank God for it. So listen, come on. Yeah, it's just stand to your feet. We're getting ready to go. Hallelujah. So now, <laughs> we hope nobody was insulted by the word of God, but we hope you learn. Amen. So now unto him that's able to do, exceeding abundantly, above all we can ask or think, according to the power that worketh in us. Come on, praise God, and consider yourself dismissed. Amen? Hallelujah.